Hey guys, it's time for Guess the Flags. A relatively weekly walk past the embassies of Washington, D.C. We're on Embassy Row, that's also known as Massachusetts Avenue, and we're starting off with Luxembourg. I believe that's Luxembourg, yeah? That's part of the Turkish Embassy, but that's not actually their embassy, that's some consular affairs office. Followed by, oh, take that side flag. Oh, that's uh, Togo. Togo, and then the Sudan. So this is Togo. That's the Sudan. That's Togo. And over there, is that Liechtenstein? Estonia is back there. That's uh, like Kazakhstan or Tajikistan. That's a weird flag. And then we've got the Greek embassy. Oh, is it for sale? The Greek is for sale. Maybe the Greeks are going to move. So that's, that big one there is the Greeks. Ah, who do we have over here? Blue, black, yellow flag. Bahamas. This is the embassy of the Bahamas. And then this is the Greece military attache. So the Greek military work in this place. This embassy here gives free Guinness every weekend. That's just a fantasy. This is the Irish embassy, the Republic of Ireland. Technically, these are all under the jurisdiction of their country, so if I step foot in there, I have to obey Irish law, more or less. So, how's it going, everyone? Weekend is over. Not for my hike. This is the Romanian embassy, one of two buildings they have around the circle. And this is. I don't know what this guy's doing. So, this is the Turkish embassy, but actually they've moved, so this is like their old embassy. So, I don't know what they use for it now. I'm not seeing any comments, so sorry for that reply. Some weird glitch. This is Latvia. This has got the weirdest sign of all of them. It's a scary looking dude. Latvia, the land of introverts and beautiful women who know they're beautiful. <laughs> this is part of the Korean embassy, but I don't think it's technically, I think this is actually a chancery for their consulate affairs office, for their tourism office. Hello, Atlanta. Oh, what do we have over there? Let's see. So that's the Philippines. Um, the British is pretty big. That's the Philippines, then it's Vietnam, and then it's Kenya. Over here is an Arab state. I don't know which one, though. This is another Greek residence. Uh, the Japanese embassy is pretty big, the British, German, French, and French embassy is like a compound. Uh, that's Chile. Chile is right in there. That's Chile. Next to Chile is Haiti. And then that's the former Pakistani embassy on the corner, but they've moved. So, oh, they put a new flag up. I actually, I actually talked to them about their flag being all dingy and stuff. It had lost its color. So they put up a new flag. I talked to the security guard a couple weeks ago. Oh, this is a tough one. Red, green, with a star. Anyone? Red, green, yellow star. Burkino Faso. Burkino Faso. North Koreans don't have an embassy, but I think they have an interest section in the Swedish embassy. So an interest section is a division of a foreign embassy that operates in the interest of another country. So I believe we have an interest section in Norway or Sweden in North Korea, and they have an interest section here, something like that. That represents them, sort of. That's the Croatian embassy over there. The flags are really flying today. It's a little bit windy. This is Kyrgyzstan, I think. Red flag with a yellow sun-like star. Kyrgyz Republic, Kyrgyz Republic, but I think we call it Kyrgyzstan. That's a big dog. That embassy there, 
I want to say it's Ivory Coast, uh, but it's under renovation. Kyrgyz Republic, yeah. So this is Korean, this is like the Korean Tourism Office, Embassy Tourism Exhibition Center. White, red, and green. Madagascar. Bom, bom, bom. Oh no, that's Cameroon. That's Cameroon over there. That's the Cameroon Embassy that's being renovated. This is Madagascar. The white one is like the United Arab Emirates Education Division, I think. Embassy of UAE Educational Affairs Office. Okay. I don't know what they do. Malawi. Malawi. Yeah, that's a crazy story. There's the other Romanian embassy. So an American diplomat was driving down the wrong side of the road in England and killed someone, and, but she can claim diplomatic immunity, so she can skate away. Um, that happens. There are probably, oh, probably about once a year, once every other year, a diplomat kills someone somewhere. It's, uh, the U.S. actually has a special fund, Embassy of the Ivory Coast. Yeah, she's the wife of a diplomat, but she'll have a diplomatic passport. All the families of diplomats are covered by diplomatic immunity and diplomatic passports. The U.S. actually has a fund if you've been injured or harmed by a diplomat. The U.S. government has this fund that they will compensate you because you have no legal recourse against the other country. That is uh, Zambia, but it's under renovation. A lot of these countries are getting new embassies done. So Zambia right there is getting renovated. This is Mexico, but this is like, this is a residence. This is not the embassy. The embassy's downtown. So as a residence though, it still too has diplomatic and consular protection. We've got a motorcade coming. We've got a lot of police cars coming behind me. I don't know what's coming up the street. Oh, what's over there? I think that's, that's like Solomon Islands or the Marshall Islands. It's some like Pacific nation embassy. It used to be part of the United States. I think they're in free association with the United States, which means they're an independent country, but the United States provides for their national security and foreign affairs. Kind of like Greenland. This is, I believe, the actual Korean embassy. It's pretty humongous. Now that over there is the Venezuelan ambassador's house, but there's a big controversy because, of course, you don't, the United States doesn't recognize the government of Venezuela. We recognize a different government. I think we've turned over the keys, or they turned over the keys of that building to the new government, which is not in power in Caracas. So it's sort of like a government in exile. Ah, let's keep going up this street. So yeah, I am going uphill. I know it doesn't seem that way, but I assure you, it does seem that way to me. And we're gonna go up, we're gonna start hitting the bigger embassies, the Japanese, the British, the South Africans up ahead, uh, the Brazilians, Italy. Then the vice president's house. I'm gonna go past the vice president's house. That's all coming in the next 10, 15 minutes. So this is the Japanese embassy over here. And the Vatican's embassy is coming up too. So the Japanese embassy, this is where on December 7th, 1941, they were burning all the secret documents because they knew war was coming. We are on Massachusetts Avenue, so this is the Japanese embassy and residence, I think. And then this is the more modern Japanese embassy attached. This is what's known as Embassy Row. Okay, so over there we've got a blue, white, and green flag. Blue, white, and green. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Blue, white, green with something on the side. And I think, is that one of the former Soviet republics? Blue, white, green. Yeah, the Vatican Embassy is coming up. It's actually a very nice embassy. It always has protesters out front claiming pedophile priests or something. Who's that blue, 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 light blue on the top, kind of electric blue, then white, then black. I'm not sure which embassy that is because I don't know that flag. And I can't read. That's the Turkish embassy over here, the new Turkish embassy. It's pretty massive. And right there you see a minaret. That's uh, 
the Islamic Center of Washington, D.C. That's the mosque where a lot of the Arab embassy guys go to pray during the day. And right behind the mosque is Barack Obama's house. And I'm not making a political statement. That's a fact. Barack Obama has a house right behind the mosque. The mosque is also right across the street from the Russian spy center, which is the uh, GRU headquarters, which is next to Ivanka Trump's house. Also, not a kidding. This is the Indian Embassy's secondary, like, consulate visa section. So the, this is part of the Indian Embassy. Their main embassy was back where we started. Ah, I don't recognize that flag. Blue, red. Mm -hmm. Embassy of Belize. So that's Belize, a Latin American country. Are they in Latin America or are they South America? Belize. South America? I can't remember Hyundai's. So this is uh, Barack Obama's backyard. I am not joking. In fact, we'll see at the end of this road here in a second. See, so see, you see that police car next to the do not enter sign? That's Barack Obama's house. In fact, there's a cop in the street looking at me. All right. And then right here is the mosque. But on the right-hand side, behind this brick building, is the Russians' uh, defense attache slash spy center. And behind it is Ivanka Trump's house. <laughs> so this is the Spanish embassy's apartments. I, you know, I don't know because his daughter just finished school last year up at Sidwell Friends, which is up, up the street here. So I don't know how much time he spends in D.C., anymore now that his daughters have all graduated and gone off to college. I think she went to Michigan. Whoa, I got a rough day. He kind of jaywalked. So. Yeah, Obama lives right back there. So those houses back there. Now we're going to go over a bridge over the Rock Creek Park. Rock Creek is a 1,800-acre park, which is like a couple miles long. And it cuts right through the city. It's got a creek, a rock creek, and a parkway. There's the creek on the right and the parkway on the left. They're pretty high up. Oh, now becomes the real uphill challenge. The road takes a definite incline upwards as we start to go past the bigger embassies up here. Now back to my right is private residences that start at about five million US. Three to five million a minimum to start. Back on the right, there's a lot of ambassadors live back there and wealthy folk. Now, up here on my left is the Italian embassy. This is a relatively new embassy, last 15 years. It's purposely built just for the Italians. I think they had some famous designer. It looks very trendy and chic, very Italian, yeah? Behind the Italians are the Danes. The Denmark embassy is up there. Hillary Clinton used to live at the end of this road. In fact, there's still some cones up there. I don't know if they still keep a house here or not. I don't go up there though, because it's a dead end, and there's cops there, and they're kind of like, what are you doing here, white boy? I'm like, I'm just walking, man. So there's the Italians, Embajado de Mexi Brazil. So this is the Brazilian ambassador's house. This big monster here is Brazilian. Now over there, that place is for rent, but as this street is zoned diplomatic, I can't rent that place and live there. Only embassies and diplomatic staff 
can rent houses on the street. So these properties are all zoned diplomat only. Kind of some wacky zoning. So for example, that beautiful house there is empty. Uh, even though they're mowing the lawn. But I can't live there because it's got to be a diplomat. It's got to be a foreign country. Actually, no, they're cleaning it off. Maybe somebody moved in. Maybe somebody rented it. Now, here's the actual Brazil embassy, the Brasilia version of this building. It's sort of modern looking like Brasilia, the capital of Brazil. Hello. So over there, that used to be part of the Indian embassy over there, but they moved. Oh no, somebody else has a mosque. They have like a blue dome. Who has a blue dome? Is it Turkey has the blue dome? I don't know, whoever it was, they have moved. Oh, I think, I think this used to be the Moroccan embassy. But Morocco built a new embassy about a mile from here. So I don't know if anyone else has wanted to rent the Moroccan embassy. This is Bolivia, the Bolivian embassy. They've got one wicked ass flag. I don't know what the deal is with that flag. I, I need to look that up. Look at this wild rainbow colored banner. Embassy of the Plurinational State of Bolivia. Now, over there. And over here is an embassy with a statue in front of it. I'll let you guys guess the embassy based on the statue. You guys know who that is? That's right, Nelson Mandela. And that is the South African Embassy. Now Mandela has a raised fist, and the joke is he's raised his fist to this side. This entire block, all the way up here, is the British Embassy. And standing above the British Embassy is this guy. Bully. So you got you got victory over here, and then Mandela saying, yeah, fight the power. We shall never surrender. Fight the power. Never fight the power. Whew. Over here is the British ambassador's house and some of his top diplomats will live in residence in this old British house. Over there is a park to this, like, Eastern European poet I've never heard of. Uh, it's just like, huh? There's some, some fans of his. Cahil Gibran, G-I-B-R-A-N, K-H, K-A-H-L-I-L-G-I-B-R-A-N. He was a philosopher and a poet. And for some reason, he's got like a park here. I, I don't know, I don't know the details of that. This always kind of struck me as a tad odd. But hey, it's America. I've stopped trying to figure it out. Whew. Let's just keep going up there. Over here is the British Embassy compound. It is massive. Still has an EU flag for at least another month. Maybe. Kind of. And the EU Embassy, if you look at my Instagram, Penguin6, I posted this the other day. This British Embassy has a London phone booth sitting in front of it.
I guess the EU flag will come down at the end of the month. I don't know if they've made arrangements for that. So that's the British Embassy. Actually, just down on the left is the New Zealand Embassy. They're kind of ducked in behind the Brits. Now, up here begins the U.S. Naval Observatory, which is the keeper of the atomic clocks of the United States and also the residence of the Vice President of the United States. As you can see from the bulletproof shield standing right there, that's the roly-poly bulletproof shield where the cops can roll out to see the cars that are arriving. So it is rush hour in D.C. This is all the traffic from Maryland coming down into the city core to work. So this road will mellow out in about an hour. The United Kingdom will not be part of the EU at the end of October. They will be leaving the European Union. There we go. The EU flag will come down. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> it's a little controversial. Hi. Welcome to Washington, D.C. Well, we're just outside the Vice President's Mansion. We're on the camera right now. They're watching us as we watch them. There are electronic sensors in the grass over there. If I was to jump this fence, a lot of men with machine guns would arrive in very short order. In fact, you'll see them biking along here. Secret Service agents on bicycles patrol this sidewalk pretty heavily. This is not one. Hey, welcome. So we're going to make our way up to the entrance of the Vice President's house. I don't know if we're going to actually see it. In the wintertime, you guys can see the Vice President's house really easily. But when the trees are all full in, you're lucky to just see a chimney, basically. Now, at the end of the month is Halloween. And I believe the Vice President does give out candy to kids. So I may bring my kids down here to go trick-or-treating. Um, that's kind of a Washington tradition for the vice president's house to give out uh, candy to kids. What size candy bars they do? So, let me get a glimpse of it here. In just a moment. No, it's still behind the trees. I can see, oh, I saw part of it. Well, see, I, this is the thing is, yes, kids can go there, but parents have to wait at the security gate. So the Secret Service takes the kids up to trick or treat but the parents stay outside. That way you don't get any political chaos. Back to embassies though. That's Finland over there. The Finnish embassy is very cool and chill, much like Finland is very cool and chill. Over here is the Vatican embassy. The Holy See has an embassy in Washington, D.C. And as I mentioned, there is a protester in front. There's always a protester in front of the Vatican. This guy's a bit insane. I heard him the other day talking about the army preparing to invade the Vatican. The missiles were locked and loaded. Now, here we are at the main entrance of the U.S. Naval Observatory. And there's a Marine out here as they dig up something by a gas line. So they gotta dig a they gotta dig a hole, but they gotta get permission from the Navy and permission from the Secret Service. I'm gonna jaywalk. 
All right, so guys, the U.S. Naval Observatory Master Clock is the official time of the United States government. It is at this moment 8.57 and 39 seconds. So you can judge from the delay versus your iPhone clock. But this is the official time server of the United States. This is government time. This is the time that the military uses and the government. So this clock is your taxes. The vice president lives, hang on a second, we're gonna watch it turn, 858. The vice president lives right behind this tree right here. In fact, you can't really see it. Well, you might be able to see, there it is. So there, that's the vice president's upper fire escape and chimney. <laughs> because of the trees, you can't really see it. Hello. So yes, the vice president uh, lives there. But across the street is Norway's embassy. So this is the Norwegian Embassy, and in front of the Norwegian Embassy is Queen Maud. Okay, so Queen Maud was the wife of the prince. And when the Germans invaded Norway, she fled to her native Sweden and then on to the United States with her son and I think two daughters or something. Her son is now the king of Norway. Yeah? Her son is the current king Haakon, I think, or whatever. I don't know what the king is. So that's the queen mother. She lived in, in Washington, was very big on the social circuit in Washington, D.C. during World War II, had, quote, a special relationship with FDR. She was the, I think she was the granddaughter of Queen Victoria. Yeah, so she was, she was, either, yeah, she was the granddaughter, or the daughter, I want to say granddaughter of Queen Victoria through one of the queen's children who married into the Swedish royal family. So King Hakon, yeah. So that was King Hawkins' mother. But I think, if I'm, if I remember, sir, she never became queen. Did she die early or something like that? I can't remember the story about Queen Maud. I wanted to say she didn't become queen or something, but I, my Norwegian royal family lineage is not really that up to date. Okay, what do we got up here? We met the Prince of Norway in Toronto. Oh, yeah. The Prince of Norway just married some gal. Apparently, there was a big scandal because she she had a bit of a reputation in the Oslo party circuits. But now she's the prince's wife, the princess of Norway. This is Ivory Coast, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of there are a lot of tabloid stories in Oslo about the current princess royal or whatever she is, current princess. From my understanding, the current king of Norway was in love with his wife, and the family wouldn't approve it, and he threatened to abdicate if he couldn't get married. So they let him marry this girl. This is the Iraqi embassy, by the way. I think it's actually the diplomatic compound. They have another embassy downtown. So when his son, the current prince of Norway, decided to marry a girl with a bit of the past in her. Uh, he could kind of relate to that. All right, we're gonna go down this side street here and we're gonna cut up to the cathedral. Trimming vines. She follows what she wants, yeah. She's her, now the current, there's, okay, so, there's the Prince of Norway, and then his sister, man, she's a wild child. She's like, I think she's dating some Jamaican voodoo shaman or something like that. I'm not, I'm not joking. She's dating this like 
really weird hippie like fortune teller kind of guy and that's the current princess of Norway who's the prince's sister just like yeah okay yeah 78,000 yeah that's about average for a morning walk I mean when I think Jamaican voodoo shaman I normally think Norwegian royal family I don't know about you but <laughs> actually I was in Oslo this summer I had a blast we really really like Oslo I like Norway quite a bit I need to see a lot more of Norway I want to go back I want to see the northern lights I want to go up north or bows on Instagram okay to check that out So back in this neighborhood, your houses are running about, this house here, for example, is probably about $2 million, $2.2 million houses back here. $1.5 to $2 million. 14 times. Wow, you must really like the, uh, the little shrimp that they sell in Norway. That's my wife's favorite. She's like, they put shrimp on everything. You want a sandwich? Put shrimp on it. Want a hamburger? Shrimp. My wife is just like, I love it. <laughs> but she said the shrimp in Norway is a bit saltier than the shrimp in Sweden. So. Stop and smell the roses. Okay, recharged. So this is old police call box, fire call box. They were, they've been repainting these into artwork. I guess they skipped this one. So over there you see the main bell tower of the National Cathedral. This is, I'll go this way I guess. This is the Episcopalian Church, the Anglican Church of the United States, basically the Church of England. In fact, uh, Queen Elizabeth um, came over here for the consecration of this cathedral has one of the big windows in here. Uh, let's go this sidewalk. This is a this is a this is a tougher uphill, but it's got a better reveal of the cathedral. So I was walking on this path the other day, and this guy comes at me in a golf cart. All right, he's taking up the whole sidewalk. So I step off to the side, and he's like, "Please stay on the sidewalk." I'm like, dude, you're on a freaking golf cart. You're taking up the whole sidewalk. Where am I supposed to go? <laughs> Dumbass. Ah, this is my son's son school is here. This is the soccer and baseball fields, football field. There's a pool down here too. It was homecoming this weekend for his school. school up there. Up we go. They have started to change. You know, we actually had a big hot spell last week. It got up to like 95, like 35 Celsius last week. And this weekend, this weekend it stayed in the mid 20s. But uh, I think, I think in the next week or two, we're gonna start to see some heavy leaves, foliage change. All right, we're coming up this path. 
and we should see the cathedral as we make our way up. What did I tell you? <laughs> yeah, we've been around a while, haven't we? So we're on the grounds of the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. This is the Episcopalian Church and Cathedral, pretty much of the United States. This is ranked as one of the top five architectural buildings in the U.S. I think it came in at number four. It took over 70 years to build this cathedral. Work started, I think, to be honest, Teddy Roosevelt, President Teddy Roosevelt, laid the cornerstone over in the 1900s, early 1900s, 1910 maybe, and work finished under President Bush, the elder President Bush, who was recently had a ceremony here when he died last year. Now we're cutting through what's known as Bishop's Garden. This is a little garden next to the cathedral. My son's school is just over the corner and they come over here for their lessons on the Garden of Eden. The teachers give them three rules to obey, and then they time each class each year to see how long it takes for them to break the three rules in the garden. And they keep a running total, so they have a general idea how rambunctious each year is by how quickly they broke the garden rules. <laughs> A little tradition they have here at the school. Hello, Zen. Welcome to the garden. It is quite beautiful, yeah. It's actually under repair. An earthquake badly shook the building, caused considerable damage, and uh, they are slowly repairing everything. <sighs> so, let's walk around to the front. Now, because this building took over 80 years to build, they were able to incorporate some pop, pop culture into it, uh, carved into one of the gargoyles and grotesques up there, is Darth Vader. Yeah, Darth Vader actually is carved onto the side of the National Cathedral. In fact, oh, there's a funeral going on, I won't go in. So what do you see here? These girls here are from the National Cathedral School, which is an all-girls school. And they're making their way from their campus over to the all-boys school. And then over there you see some of the boys making their way to the girls' school. So they do have a few co-ed classes. around the side. 
Actually, my son might be walking by. My son just had his Chinese class over at the girls' school. It was his first period this morning. So he might, we might see him cutting across campus. It is beautiful, isn't it? So here's some of the, uh, these are some of the things that fell off during the earthquake. They need money to renovate. They don't have enough money to fix it. They need 35 million to, to update and fix this place. Ooh, I'm really hot. I need to get home. So I actually live just around the block. So uh, I think we'll end up here. Okay. Let's see if we can get the color to focus a bit. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that scope. I'm gonna sign off now, head home. Feel free to check me out on YouTube, Penguin6, Instagram, Penguin6, and of course, Twitter, Penguin6. I'm pretty active all those places. I will catch you the next time.